All right, guys, we're back at the lathe. Here's the piece of the rim that I cut off. Uh, this needs to be widened about a quarter of an inch. So since it's a uh, circle, we're going to do about an eighth of an inch <clears throat> on one side pressing, and that'll equal to a quarter overall. Um, here's the parts I put together. Just a regular tool holder, a ball bearing head laying around, some bar stock. This is actually a key stock, but I don't think I'll ever need a key stock this big. Um, I'm going to take a piece of this, cut it off, fit it in here, and weld it to the back end of the round stock. I'm going to put the round stock in the lathe. I'll pull this guy out, <clears throat> um, put the round stock in, turn down a little bit of the shoulder here to fit the bearing, and then drill and tap it for a bolt and a washer. All right, guys, the first modification I'm going to do here is on the uh, tool holder itself. You can see that the Allen screws that they give you have these machined down nubs on the end. Uh, those are great if you're putting a smaller uh, diameter tool in here. Um, my problem is that my bar stock is just about the entire thickness of the opening here. Um, so when I back these all the way out, I'm going to end up with very little threads, probably like half of the available thread um, to use there. So. Anyway, my quick idea is just to kind of screw these down, get them, you know, locked down, not tight, just a little bit, and then take the grinder and just kind of go straight across with the grinder. All right, let's see if I can show you what I'm doing here. guys can see that obviously I nicked the tool holder a little bit but I don't plan on changing this one out guys I'm working towards having one tool holder for every tool I have um, when you screw these set screws in and out a whole bunch of times if you're changing tools and doing whatnot that we all do uh, the threads tend to wear out um, so I'm gonna just start these are cheap enough on eBay I'm gonna just start buying enough that I leave everything set up the way it is uh, with that being said, I'm going to cut these two and then fit my bar stock. All right, so I'm going for a slip fit on this, guys. I'm going to show you here that <clears throat> it's a pretty good fit. Uh, I left it just shy of the face here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is pull back the cutter just a hair and go in another eh, like a sixteenth of an inch and make the diameter just slightly larger than this this way it'll it'll be a little more snug on the back end and then like i said before drill and tap a hole in the front okay so i got out the snap on uh, chart here for what size drill bit to use i'm going with the 5 16th uh, bolt and washer you can see here Washer is a pretty good fit on the inside of the bearing. And then the bolt's just going to go through like that. Um, so <clears throat> my tap here is 5 16 18, which is the number afterwards, is the pitch of the thread. So the outside diameter is 5 16 18 is threads per inch. Um, now look at the chart now. I don't know if you guys could see it. I could barely see it. <laughs> uh, looks like a quarter inch drill bit is pretty good for this um you can see the 5 16 to 18 right there or there if you go back a little bit you get a nice tighter thread so that's what i usually do uh i could go with 17 64 <laughs>
right, so 764 it is, guys. Uh, the quarter inch was just a little too small. Probably be great on aluminum to keep the threads nice and tight. But on steel, we're going to go with the 1764s. Have the tap chucked up here on my holder. Going to just feed it in. I'm going to bring in the live center like I've shown you guys in the past. And I'm going to lock the turret and then just work the wheel. Just slowly tap it in as I continue to cut the threads. All right, you can see the setup here. I'm going to just by hand, I lock the spindle. And I'm going to by hand take it in a turn. Move the tailstock forward. So the live center is putting pressure again. Keep it at center. Take it in half a turn. Forward. And every once in a while, I just hit it with a little lube. And keep it moving here. Uh, I did change out the tap. I showed you guys that last tap. That was more like a bottoming tap or just for cleaning threads. Um, I had this one, which is a nice starter tap. It's much pointier. And it's two flute compared to the other one that's four flute. All right, so we're going to call that part done. I'm going to take the bearing. Doesn't matter what way you put it on. Got that nice slip fit. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, washer set up with my bolt. And these threads are very tight, uh, which I like actually for this application. Um, I can turn them by hand, but it's getting pretty tight. Uh, bearing is a beautiful fit. I'm just going to take a half inch uh, ratchet wrench. I won't bore you guys with the rest of this, but I'm going to tighten this in and then flip it around and work on welding that to the bar stock. All right, guys. So I basically just welded it in the front about an inch on each side underneath and one in the back. Um, I didn't want to go crazy. I'm trying to get this done as fast as I can. In the future, I might pull this out, finish welding it, and mount it in my bridge port and mill it back close so I can mount it fully. But for now, I just wanted to get the bar stock completely inside the tool holder. Um, should be fine for this. I decided to just leave this full length. Um, in case I ever have to go like deep inside a rim or you know use it for something else, Maybe put a cutter on the end of this and go inside and cut something. Use it like a long boring bar. I don't know. Uh, we're going to see. It might get in the way, but for now, I think it'll be fine. All right, so here's the setup we're going with. Got the roller just where I want it. It's about centered right on the edge. Uh, and I got it level with the center line as best I can. Um, took an old dial indicator, magnetic base mount. Um, I decided not to go crazy and actually use the dial indicator, but if I wanted, I could set the dial indicator against the edge and move it until it comes out an eighth of an inch. Um, I'm just going to eyeball this one. I'm going to set this guy up about an eighth of an inch out, just like that. I'm going to take, or I did this already, actually. I took the piece that has to fit with this and just stuck it up there to come up with that eighth of an inch number. Um, I'm going to spin it. I'm going to try to do it without heat first and just see if I could push it out. Uh, the only drawback to this is I might need a little spring back on steel. Uh, so spring back, guys, is when you push on something, it gets to a certain point, but then when you let off, it'll come back to a certain amount. Um, I might, what I'll do is probably pull this back, it's adjustable, and put this here, still in the same line it's in, but just leave it slightly proud of the face of this uh, rim here. Um, so this has room to move out and then come back to where I want it. It's definitely working guys I'm not sure if you could see but it has a nice bow out to it on the edge here um, I'm going to try heat next uh, this rim is pretty thick and most of the videos I see online guys do this making bowls and whatnot um, it's mostly sheet metal this is a little thicker than sheet metal 
Uh, so I'm going to just spin it. I'll keep the ball bearing away for a minute. Nice thing about this setup is my dial indicator rod and my bearing are all on the uh, cross slide. So I literally just bring it in, bring it out. Um, I'm going to spin it nice and slow and just take the map gas torch and heat the edge here. see it's starting to get like a nice curve to it i'm going to take the other piece just fit it up here uh, getting pretty close guys still gotta go a little bit more as you can see there but just doing it a little at a time all right guys you could see that worked absolutely perfect i got a beautiful nice tight fit just like i wanted let me see if you guys could see in there help if you move the light there that is absolutely beautiful. Now, uh, now I'll probably, eh, I'll probably use this again, just to set the edge here. Keep tapping it with the hammer, get it around as best I can, and then put a couple of tack welds. Um, you know, I'll put one tack, then I'll tap it with the hammer on the other edge, and I'll get it to spin as true as I can. I'm not gonna go crazy, like I said, this is going on a three-wheeler in the dirt, nonetheless, so it's not like these rims need to be balanced. Um, they are, uh, I'm not putting tubes in these tires, so I'm putting the O-ring back in the center, um, and I'm going to fully weld this. I might fully weld the inside, maybe just tack the outside, or vice versa, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll fully weld the outside, because you see it. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> 